Throughout the annals of history, hidden beneath the layers of time, lies a treasure trove of peculiar tales and mind-boggling oddities. Welcome to Curiosities Unveiled, a journey into the weird and bizarre historical facts that defy our expectations and challenge our understanding. Did you know that turkeys were once worshipped like gods? Turkeys held immense significance in ancient Mayan culture. Around 300 BC, the Mayans revered turkeys as vessels of the gods and incorporated them into religious rites. These birds symbolized power and prestige and were domesticated for their role in ceremonies. They appeared extensively in Maya iconography and archaeology, representing fertility, abundance, and spiritual connections. Today, while turkeys are favored as a Thanksgiving meal in America, their historical importance in Mayan civilization highlights their sacred status and cultural significance in ancient times. Did you know that there's a popular tale about Napoleon Bonaparte being attacked by bunnies during a rabbit hunt? Napoleon, renowned for his military prowess as the Emperor of the French, was an avid hunter. He enjoyed various hunting activities throughout his life. The description of the bunny onslaught as vicious and unstoppable adds a dramatic flair to the narrative. It paints a picture of an overwhelming force of bunnies charging fearlessly and relentlessly towards Napoleon and his men, catching them off guard and creating a chaotic scene amidst what was supposed to be a leisurely hunting activity. While the attack of the bunnies story may lack historical authenticity, it has become a popular legend associated with Napoleon. In the 13th century, Pope Gregory IV believed that black cats were instruments of evil associated with Satan himself. Fueled by this belief, he ordered the elimination of cats throughout Europe. However, this decision had dire consequences that no one could have foreseen. Without the presence of feline predators, rat populations thrived and multiplied without restraint. The absence of cats, the natural predators of rats, disrupted the ecological balance, allowing the plague-carrying rats to spread the disease unchecked. And here's where it gets truly alarming. Rats were carriers of the bubonic plague, a deadly disease that swept through towns and cities, resulting in the devastating Black Death, claiming millions of lives and leaving a lasting impact on society. Did you know that the first recorded human flight in the UK was that of an English monk? The legend claims that in the year 1005, Aylmer of Malmesbury constructed a set of wings for himself. He scaled the tower and sprang from it, able to glide into the wind for nearly a furlong. That's about 200 meters or 220 yards. He may have worried a little, but the headwind was tremendous, and he ended up drifting off to the side and crashing. Writings regarding the incident claim that although he survived the collision, he shattered both of his legs and lived the rest of his life with a limp. He reasoned that if he had also created a tail for himself, he would have had more success. Did you know that throughout history, there are captivating stories that blur the lines between fact and legend? One such tale revolves around the enigmatic Roman Emperor Caligula and his beloved horse, Incitatus. He provided the horse with a luxurious lifestyle, including a marble stall, an ivory manger, and a jeweled collar. Some sources claim that Caligula planned to make Incitatus a consul, the highest position in the Roman Republic, but these accounts are disputed. Caligula's reign was marked by a mix of political accomplishments and erratic behavior, and the stories of his relationship with Incitatus have contributed to his notorious reputation. The story of Incitatus, the horse consul, remains debated. Some sources claim it contributed to the Roman Emperor's assassination. Write in the comments below if you think if this is fact or fiction. So, did you know that contrary to popular belief, the story that witches were burned at the stake during the Salem witch trials is inaccurate? The misconception can be attributed to the association of witchcraft trials with burnings in different historical periods. In reality, during the trials in 1692 to 1693, only 20 individuals were convicted of witchcraft and sentenced to death, but they were hanged rather than burned. Although the Salem witch trials was a tragic and dark chapter in history, characterized by wrongful accusations and flawed legal proceedings, it is essential to emphasize that none of the convicted individuals were executed by burning, debunking the popular misconceptions surrounding the trials. Did you know that a heroic dog named Juliana earned two Blue Cross medals for her valorous deeds during World War II? One of her most amazing exploits involves urinating on a live bomb to put it out. Juliana, a Great Dane belonged to a family whose shoe shop in England was frequently bombarded throughout the war, particularly during the infamous Blitz period. When a shell fell through the roof of Juliana's owner's home in 1941, it didn't explode right away. 
Juliana approached the burning bomb and urinated on it in an act of extraordinary instinct or great nervousness, magically neutralizing the device. This brave action possibly saved everyone's lives because it stopped the bomb from causing extensive damage. The likelihood is high that the bomb's explosion would have destroyed the entire house and everyone inside, maybe setting off a fire that might have spread to nearby structures. What do you think? Was this just a case of chance or was this the dog's natural desire to defend its owners? Did you know that a French ship sank nearby Hartlepool, England during the Napoleonic Wars in the 19th century? According to legend, the lone survivor was a monkey decked out in military costume, whom the villagers mistook for a French spy. The monkey was then taken on trial and then hanged as punishment. The legend of the monkey hangers has become a part of local folklore, with Hartlepool residents affectionately referred to by that term. It emphasizes the perils of making fast decisions and the tense atmosphere that characterizes times of war. Today, Hartlepool celebrates its distinctive moniker as a representation of its identity and sense of community, incorporating the legend into everyday customs. Did you know that between 1913 and 1915, people mailed their babies? On January 1st, 1913, post offices started accepting packages weighing more than four pounds, but there were no clear rules on what you could and couldn't send through the mail. People started pushing its boundaries right away by mailing eggs, bricks, snakes, and other odd packages. One couple immediately exploited this. Their newborn boy will be delivered using the postal service's new parcel service. The Beegs sent the boy to the mailman, who dropped him off a mile away at his grandmother's house, after they had paid 15 cents for his stamps, and an undisclosed sum to insure him for $1.50. The head curator of history at the National Postal Museum back then says she has found seven other instances of people mailing children between 1913 to 1915, beginning with that baby in Ohio. It wasn't common to mail your children, yet for long distances, it would have been cheaper to buy the stamps to send a kid by railway mail than to buy her a ticket on a passenger train. In the annals of history, there are figures who rise above the rest, displaying exceptional wit, motivation, and leadership. Among them, one name shines bright, Saladin, the renowned Muslim military leader. Saladin's journey began in humble origins, but it was his unwavering determination and intellect that propelled him to greatness. From a young age, Saladin's thirst for knowledge and desire to make a difference set him apart. Saladin understood the importance of unity. He used his diplomatic skills to bring together diverse Muslim factions, forging alliances based on a shared purpose. You promised. You promised to return Jerusalem. Don't forget. It was during the recapture of Jerusalem that Saladin showcased his true brilliance and motivation. Through his words and actions, Saladin inspired his troops, reminding them of the significance of their cause and the defense of their faith. Saladin's wit and strategic thinking came to the fore as he devised a plan to exploit the weaknesses of the Crusaders. With keen insight and strategic brilliance, Saladin made a bold move. He cut off the lifeblood of the Crusaders, severing their water supply. In doing so, he created a desperate and dire situation, capitalizing on the vulnerability of the Crusaders. As the Crusaders faced the dire consequences of their dwindling water supply, they were compelled to venture beyond the city walls in a desperate quest for sustenance. The once mighty crusaders found themselves grappling with unquenchable thirst and mounting desperation. Saladin's calculated maneuver had set the stage for a turning point in the battle for Jerusalem. As the crusaders weakened under the weight of thirst and despair, Saladin recognized the opportune moment to strike. With unwavering determination and strategic acumen, he rallied his forces and prepared for the decisive assault on Jerusalem. With calculated precision, Saladin made crucial tactical decisions,
directing his troops with a keen eye for exploiting opportunities. His presence on the battlefield became a symbol of courage and determination, galvanizing the Muslim forces. The moment of triumph finally arrived. The Muslim forces breached the Crusader defenses, surging into the streets of Jerusalem. Saladin's unwavering leadership and the indomitable spirit of his troops brought about the long-awaited liberation of the Holy City. Saladin's story holds a moral lesson for us all. It reminds us that true leadership lies not just in physical prowess, but in intelligence, diplomacy, and the ability to inspire. His united factions, transcending differences for a common goal, showcase the power of unity in achieving great feats. The power of unity, when coupled with determination and intellect, can conquer any obstacle, just as Saladin triumphed against all odds. As Saladin once said, unity is strength, and when there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. In the rustic heartland of medieval France, amidst vast fields and humble cottages, a young girl named Joan emerged from obscurity to inscribe her name in the annals of history. Joan of Arc, born into poverty, defied all expectations and embarked on a remarkable journey that would ignite the flames of inspiration for generations to come. As she toiled under the open skies, her aspirations soared higher than the birds that graced the heavens. Deep within her beat the heart of a warrior, a visionary leader destined to challenge the status quo and alter the course of a nation. Guided by ethereal visions, Joan heeded the call to support Charles VII, the Dauphin of France, and assist him in reclaiming his kingdom from the clutches of the English. Armed with unwavering faith and an indomitable spirit, Joan convinced Charles to grant her an army, resolute in her determination to lead the charge against the English invaders. On the battlefield, she commanded with a wisdom that belied her youth, turning the tide of war. Her victories kindled a flicker of hope in the hearts of her compatriots, sowing seeds of courage in the face of insurmountable odds. I don't know what you're going to ask me. You may ask me things that I won't want to answer. You will swear to tell the truth about everything you are asked. I, I will willingly swear to tell the truth about all earthly things. But as to my revelations, I, I've told no one except my king. Charles VII, the one and only king of France. You must take the oath. Not Even in the clutches of betrayal, Joan's spirit remained unbroken. Captured, accused, and subjected to an unjust trial, she stood tall, defending her convictions with unwavering resolve. As the flames consumed her mortal form, Joan's legacy endured, burning brightly in the hearts of those who dared to dream. Joan of Arc's death and sacrifice left an indelible mark on history, revealing profound insights about her character, the society she lived in, and the enduring impact of her legacy. Though her life was tragically cut short, her martyrdom became a symbol of unwavering conviction and the pursuit of one's beliefs. Joan of Arc, the peasant girl who defied all odds, serves as a timeless reminder that greatness can emerge from the depths of poverty. In the ancient city of Carthage, a young boy named Hannibal Barca embarked on a remarkable journey. Born into a humble family, his father, a respected general, instilled in him a sense of honor and a burning desire for revenge against Rome. As a child, Hannibal dreamed of leading armies and listened intently to his father's tales of battles fought against the Romans. Despite their limited means, the Barca family instilled in him a deep understanding of the struggles faced by the common people. As Hannibal grew older, his thirst for knowledge became insatiable. He studied history, tactics, and the art of war. He observed the strength and unity of the Carthaginian army, envisioning himself at its helm, leading his fellow citizens to victory. When his father fell in battle, 
Hannibal felt the weight of responsibility on his young shoulders. With determination burning in his eyes, he vowed to carry on his father's legacy and exact revenge upon Rome. Hannibal's rise through the ranks was not without obstacles. His humble origins often invited scorn and doubt, but he let his unwavering commitment and audacious strategies speak for themselves. It was during the Second Punic War that Hannibal's genius truly shone. Leading his army on an audacious journey across the treacherous Alps, he defied the odds and inspired his soldiers to persevere. On the battlefield, Hannibal's humble background became a source of strength. He understood the needs and motivations of his soldiers, forging a deep bond with them. He earned their loyalty by leading from the front and listening to their concerns. With limited resources but an indomitable spirit, Hannibal employed unconventional tactics and strategies that left his enemies bewildered. His audacity and brilliance outmaneuvered the powerful Roman Republic time and time again. Hannibal Barca, the once humble boy from Carthage, had become a legend. His name would forever be etched in history as one of the greatest military commanders of all time. A shining example of how ambition, resilience, and a humble background can shape a person destined for greatness. In the midst of the chaos during the Three Kingdoms period in ancient China, one warrior stood out for his unmatched martial skills and brilliant mind. This is the story of Lu Bu and the battle of wit and motivation. Lu Bu addresses his soldiers. Today we face a formidable enemy, but we shall not falter. We have a plan that will turn the tide of this battle. Trust in my leadership and fight with unwavering determination. Lu Bu devised a daring plan to confuse and demoralize the enemy. His troops concealed their identity, making strategic retreats while luring the enemy into a false sense of victory. The enemy, unaware of the ruse, pursued what they believed to be a weakened and retreating force. Little did they know, Lu Bu had something entirely different in mind. With his troops reinvigorated and their spirits high, Lu Bu seized the perfect moment to strike back. Like a tempest unleashed, Lu Bu's forces emerged from hiding, catching the enemy off guard. The battlefield erupted in chaos as Lu Bu showcased his unparalleled martial prowess. Inspired by their leader's unwavering resolve, Lu Bu's troops fought with unparalleled determination, striking fear into the hearts of their enemies. The enemy, confused and demoralized, crumbled under the relentless assault. Lu Bu's strategic brilliance and unwavering motivation had turned the tide of the battle. Lu Bu emerged victorious, his name forever etched in the annals of history. This battle showcased his exceptional wit and unwavering motivation, solidifying his legacy as a legendary figure of ancient China. Just as Lu Bu's leadership and quick thinking inspired his troops, we too can find strength within ourselves to face adversity head-on.